Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is your latest Manchester United news as two meltdowns hit Manchester United again. Will we ever have a quiet news day for Manchester United? Incredible stuff coming in, drama around Mason Mount's transfer, outrage around Martinez Lissandro being called up to the Argentinian squad when he's injured. So two big stories there. We're also going to be talking about Ten Hag's future and why it is a bit of a stalemate between Ineos and Ten Hag and we'll get into that as well. But look, let's start off with the big story of the of the morning as far as I'm concerned. I mean there's no there's there's no there's no better place to start than to actually just read out what the actual uh, story is. I mean I, I quote tweeted it on my Twitter this morning. Uh, basically, this is it. A source close to one of the Man United players has claimed that Mason's Mount's move to the club was not for football reasons. This is coming in from Samuel Lucas in the Manchester Evening News. So let me read that back to you. It's in the article that he has written about Mason Mount. There's more detail in that. But a source close to one of Manchester United's players have claimed that Mason Mount's move to the club was not for footballing reasons. We're also going to talk about Lissandro Martinez, who will be called up, we understand, to the Argentinian squad. Lissandro Martinez will be called up to the Argentinian squad next week as he's an important player within the group. Um, and this is their last reunion before the Copa America. And he will be continue to recover his uh, process with them, completing sessions with the squad. Some people are saying this happened last August and he got injured. Why is he flying out to the other side of the, of, the, of the planet to play for Argentina when he's not been fit all season? So there's outrage around that as well. Meltdowns everywhere. Personally, I don't think either things are bad. In my opinion, I don't think there's a problem with either, but we'll delve into both. But I want to start off with this story we were just talking about. Um, a source close to one of Man United players has claimed that Man United's Mason Mount's move to the club was not for football reasons. What the hell? does that mean? Incredible. And look, I want to just say from the very off here, what that reads is that Mason Mount is a Manchester United player, not because he's a footballer. Absolutely incredible. And, you know, let me just get this right. A source close to one of Man United's players has claimed that Mason Mount's move to the club was not for football reasons. So a source close to one of Man United's players, not a Man United player then, who is the source? Who is the source? Is it, is it a Manchester United player's Tesco delivery guy? Who is the source? You know what? I'm going to just... I wasn't going to say this. It, I, I, there's no problem with me saying it, but I'm just going to say it. As somebody... Well, as an outlet, whatever you want to call it, as a community that has been the victim of this two days ago, we need to do better. We need to do better because who is the source close to a Man United player that is allowing this to be put out to the public and Man United fans. Enough is enough. Ineos need to start looking at this. The players need to start looking at this. It is damaging them. Now, the players deserve criticism. We're not playing well. We sometimes see it on the pitch. They're inconsistent. But in fairness to the players, they are being tarnished by shit like this. You go back to the story at the weekend where apparently the players were outraged that Rasmus Hoyland did an interview with the United Stand. I said to you on Sunday night, this is not a true story. It's not a true story. People are saying, well, I'm going to believe it over you, Mark, because it's coming from a credible outlet that's been following United for years. So I think I'm going to believe you. And I'm telling you, it's not true. It is not true. We were at Carrington all day. The players knew the interview was taking place. Some of them were a bit uncomfortable with it, but didn't really, you know, didn't want him not to do it. Rasmus wouldn't have been stopped doing it. Watch as the United Stand wanted to do it. Story goes out on Sunday, completely false. Truth comes out from different journalists last night that actually some United fans find it quite humorous that he was doing it with the United Stand when they'd been criticised by it. Some complete, complete nonsense story that idiots in the fan base believe because they want to believe it coming from sources that aren't named. And here we are. It's quite well timed, actually, because we need to start. We need to start calling this out. Who's the fucking source? Like, because the trouble it causes our football club is incredible. And as somebody was a victim of this on Sunday and absolutely stunned by the pylon from a, you know, from a source that didn't have the true story, we've now got another source close to a player saying that Mason Mount's not been bought for footballing reasons. How damaging is this to the dressing room? How damaging is this to Mason Mount? And how damaging is it 
to what we're trying to build at Manchester United. Now, I'm all, you know, we're a news show. We're going to talk about it. We're a fan community. We're going to talk about it. But in talking about it, we don't just go, wow, Mason Mount wasn't bought for real footballing reasons. We talk about it. And God, do you make me accountable if I go off piste? You know, you do. Who is making these people accountable? Who is Samuel Lookhurst accountable to in putting that article out to thousands of United fans that Mason Mount, according to some source, has been signed for non-footballing reasons? What are the non-footballing reasons? Who is the source? You can't just drop that out there and go, Ugh. you know, I got loads of shit on Sunday. I got death threats over something that wasn't true. And you've got articles like that coming out with no detail on it and we're the enemy. Come on, we've got to be better than this. What are the non-footballing reasons and who is the fucking source? Because I might be getting a bit agitated this morning, but I'll tell you what, the shit I had to put up with, that Beth had to put up with, that Faz had to put up with, that my staff had to put up with for the last 48 hours on lies, and then 48 hours later, was like, you know, being told to shut down as United fans, shut down, you're toxic for the club. And then 48 hours later, a story like this comes out that's got no source and doesn't tell us the non-footballing reasons. Oh, that's fine. No, that, that's fine. They're, they've been to university and they've done a journalist degree, so they can write that. You're just a fan. You can't write the truth. It, it, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting where we're heading. People need to wake up and realise that people put stuff out there that's not true. What are the non-footballing reasons that we've signed Mason Mount? Who is the source close to the player? Who is the player? You can't, you can't do this anymore. What if the source is lying? What if the player is lying? What if they've got some vendetta? This goes out into the public vacuum of our fan base and becomes something that damages Ten Hag, Mason Mount and this football club. And it's fine if it's true, but I don't think it is. I don't think it is. And there's the mic drop, right? Last summer. I mean, look, I, don't, I think we signed Mason Mount for footballing reasons. I think we signed Mason Mount for footballing reasons. And it makes me laugh that the minute he touches grass... A story like this comes out. And this is the problem with United. People talk about toxicity and negativity. All I want and all you want is Manchester United to be successful. And I look at the current setup and I know it's not good enough. So I, I shout about it. I'm negative about it because it's not good enough. There is a very big difference between Mason Mount coming. You know, there's a very big difference between a Man United footballer playing bad for weeks and being called out for not being good enough compared to Mason Mount's back from a long time injury and the second he hits grass, we didn't buy him for footballing reasons. That's toxicity. That's a campaign. That's an agenda. He's not even put a fucking shirt on yet. He's only just come back from an injury and there's a negative story about him. And yet we're negative. Come on. We're, we're, I'm talking about as a community. We're negative because we see players not putting in a shift. Going after Mason Mount when he's only just had his first training session saying he's not been signed for footballing reasons. Well, well, tell us then. You can't leave it hanging in the air. That's like, you know, your neighbours move in and the neighbours across the road say, uh, well, I'd be worried if I was you. Keep your kids locked up. What? What? Why? What? You can't just say that. Why? Why? Is he an ice cream man and he's going to give him ice cream and make them get unhealthy? You know, why? You've got, you've got to give more than that. You've got to give more than that. And I'll tell you this, right? So we signed Mason Mount for not footballing reasons. I, I don't agree. But I'll, I'm going to tell you a true story that I told you last summer. Last summer, Man United played a friendly in Oslo. Beth and Ryan, our producer, flew over the day before. On the same flight, sat next to them, was Darren Fletcher, Manchester United's technical director. They're having a chat on the plane. Darren Fletcher says, quite rightly... I'm not, I'm not going to start talking to you about stuff because you might put it out there. Ryan and Beth said, that's not how we work. We won't put anything out there that you don't want to put out there. And they were just talking about, you know, United, when he used to play for United. And they got onto the topic of Mason Mount. And Darren Fletcher said to Beth and Ryan, Mason Mount is a player that Eric Ten Hag has liked for ages. He's obsessed with him and really excited about the signing. So... That's from Darren Fletcher. How is it not for footballing reasons when it's very, very obvious that Eric Ten Hag massively likes Mason Mount? 
Also, Arteta and Klopp like Mason Mount. In the same article in the Manchester Evening News, apparently Arteta was going around telling people early last year that he expected to sign Mason Mount. So, you know, maybe I'm just a little bit on the edge because of the, the unfairness that was attributed to us at the weekend. But I'm not I'm not I'm not just gonna let this rest. It's it's not fair on the dressing room, on the United players and Mason Mount and Eric Ten Hag that a story drops out from a source that we don't know who it is again. And I think that, look, I don't mind when I say to you on a Monday, this is an A-star source and I've been told this about this. I can't tell you who that is. And it's actually, you know, it's about stuff that's relevant. I think when you say a player's, a Man United player, someone close to a Man United player is shit-stirring in that way, then... You know, there needs to be more to the story than that. What are the non-footballing reasons? What is this source? Because, you know, I, I just don't think it's true. I just do not think it's true. And on the topic of Mason Mount being bought for not footballing reasons, I was thinking about this when I went live because it's important to always try and figure out if there is something to it because I would not be writing that article. I would not be presenting a show and just saying to you, we signed Mason Mount for non-footballing reasons. I would want to know what they were. And I would want to put it in the article, if I'm being honest. The only reason I thought about non-footballing reasons with Mason Mount, and I'd love to know what you think. The only reason I could think was homegrown quota. You know, we signed Mason Mount because he's English for homegrown quota. But that's not a non that's not a not non-footballing reason. If you sign a player because they're English because of homegrown quotas. That's still a footballing reason because Manchester United are a football club and our footballing squad needs a certain amount of homegrown players. That's the only thing I could think. And that's not a non-footballing reason. It's sinister when you say a non-footballing reason because you're talking about has Mason Mount got shares in Manchester United? Is there somebody at Mason, you know, is Mason Mount's family close to Richard Arn? You know, that's what you start to think. Um, and... Look, you, you need more than that. You need you need more than that. What I will tell you, and I told you the story from Darren, you know, that we had firsthand from Darren Fletcher, and I guarantee the Man United dressing room, Ten Hag, everyone in Man United will be this morning going, what is this nonsense? You know, Mason Mount was bought for footballing reasons, 100%. And he's a good player. What we all might concede is, where does he fit into the team? But... It's just another incredible story around Manchester United. Um, DK says, the 58 tweeted about you and the channel. Then I got blocked. Funny how all the trolls say you block them when they're not better. Go, Mark. I, I mean, look, in regards to the 58, I think they did some great work around the protest uh, and Glazers out. Um, and, I, you know, I'm not going to knock them for that. But I think anything they say about us is just complete and utter nonsense because they've never met us. They won't speak to us. And they've got no idea other than clips and nonsense about everything else that all these other people talk about which is just not true um and actually if they listen to the last 10 minutes 10 minutes they'd understand that that's the vast majority of our content where we actually are trying to defend this football club from nonsense around you know stuff that's being done to actually bring this football club down how does that help a manchester united player or manager with that sort of story going out there with no i mean i, I, I tell you what bullshit absolute bullshit not bought for footballing reasons from a source close to a player. I call bullshit. If you're not going to tell us who the player is and you're not going to tell us what the non-footballing reasons are, call it as bullshit. Simple as that. Uh, what, what happened to you at the weekend? Says Mario. I'm not going back there. Ineos uh, need to shut down all this paper talk. Says Daniel. Why is it just Ten Hag signings that are constantly being questioned? Mount, Hoyland, Anana, Antona. It's obviously a pylon. Oh, uh, Patrick, can I just applaud you? As soon as I read that this morning, I thought... Outlet that doesn't like Ten Hag going after a Ten Hag signing. You know what? I'll literally tell you what I thought when I read it this morning. I was like, really positive that Mason Mount's back. Article from Outlet that don't like Ten Hag. Seeing fans being positive about Mount coming back. Stick a pin in it. And that, that was my instant... My, some people might say it's unfair. That was my perception and interpretation that everybody's excited to see Mason Mount back. They see it. Ten Hag signing, people are excited. Let's put a pop. Let, let's damage that player. Let's 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 get the Ten Hag out brigade to jump on Mount. And 
that's that's what I see. Some of these stories are more sinister and ridiculous than what came out during the Ranyak era, and I'm sick of it, says Emily. Uh, Papa Green, thank you. And look, what I will say is, if there's any truth in it, you need to give us more, Samuel. You, you know, otherwise, bullshit. If there's any truth in it, prove it. Because if there is a United player leaking to Samuel Lookhurst and the Manchester Evening News about Mason Mount, who's only just coming back from a serious injury, then that player needs fucking off. Simple as that. But I, I, I call bullshit. I don't think it's true. Don't think it's true at all. What the truth will probably be is the similar tr truth to the lie that was told about us at the weekend. Actually, the truth is a Man United player was joking about Mason Mount saying, you know, he's been injured so long. We, I, I think we bought him to be a bloody model or something. I mean, that's probably the truth. Probably the truth because things get twisted. You know, Man United dressing room was furious with Rasmus Hoyland for doing an interview with the United stand. Oh, no, the truth was they were having a bit of a joke about him doing it, considering they'd had a bit of stick in the past. And Rasmus said, I'm doing it anyway because I've watched the channel for ages and I want to do it. <laughs> Um, what would non-footballing reasons even be, says 90 Stephen. Commercial reasons to give him an escape from Chelsea and not use him makes no sense. Look, my understanding is Mason Mount didn't want to leave Chelsea. Mason Mount left Chelsea because Chelsea forced him out. He didn't want to go. John Terry has alluded to this. If you want my opinion, and I have got some good connections at Chelsea and obviously Manchester United as well, and I've told you the Darren Fletcher story, Ten Hag, Mikel Arteta, Jurgen Klopp, when they knew that Mount was available, all very interested. Man United signed him. Ten Hag's obsessed with him. Footballing reason. Why did he leave Chelsea? Footballing reason. Basically, they sold him at Chelsea because he's homegrown. It's pure profit. They're trying to do it with Conor Gallagher. Chelsea fans know this and they need to wake up to it. Chelsea are financially fucked. And the way that they are trying to justify their ridiculous approach in the transfer window is that if they sell a homegrown player, it's pure profit. So when Mason Mount gets sold for 55 million, that's 55 million straight into the club. They're trying to do it with Conor Gallagher, who, who, who I think is their best player. They'll probably do it with Reese James. It's, it, that's what happened with Mason Mount. Also, they didn't want to pay him the wages that he wanted. That's what happened with Mason Mount. You know, stories that he had to leave London or, you know, whatever, because he broke up with his girlfriend or whatever nonsense out there. It's very easy to establish the truth. And, and, and I think that's what John Terry was alluding to. You know, Chelsea are quite happy to let homegrown players go because it, it helps them get out of the shit they're in. Um, morning, Mark. I'm having an interview for my dream uni soon and I'm nervous. Thanks for your amazing content and positive com community you've built, says Ping. Thank you very much. Uh, positive there, you see. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, anyway, quarterfinals, Arsenal are on the march, says Tyrell. Yeah, I think you're on the wrong channel, though. Um, could it be linked to the club's decision to give him the number seven, says Glenny. Well, I, I think there is, a, there is a, a little bit of resentment towards the Mason Mount signing because some people don't understand why we did it. And a lot of people don't understand why we gave him the number seven shirt. I don't think we should have given him the number seven shirt, by the way. I think that was wrong for a lot of reasons, but... Let's be fair on the lad. He's being, you know, we're not we're not going to pile onto him. I don't think that should be happening with this fan base. We're better than that. You know, pile onto him if he starts playing for United shit for a year. But, you know, give him a chance. Brailsford and Blanc need to root out these leakers, says McElvish. You can't have a cohesive unit when there are players doing this. Um, you know what? I won't always defend the players, McElvish, but the, the story we were subjected to at the weekend about outraged players that were actually joking with Rasmus, I'm going to defend the players on this. You know, Who's the source close to the player doing this about Mason Mount? I, I call bullshit. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, anyway, um, Edison, Chris Wheeler. Really interesting story, Stefan. Um, Chris Wheeler, who I'm going to give him credit. As I said last night, he was the guy who got the scoop from United about the truth yesterday that happened with Rasmus because that did come from United. Um, brilliant bit of journalism. But Chris Wheeler always, also speaking this morning about Edison. Um, and Man United have been scouting him. Um, told you this, been telling you this for a couple of weeks now. Um, Edison is a player that Man United are very, very interested in. I keep mentioning this. Yes, he's a bit more of an eight, but I think they, we would move him back as a six if we bought him. Um, keep your eyes on it. I keep telling you, Edison, keep an eye on it from Atalanta. We've been looking at him for a long time. Newcastle were looking at him in January, Dan Ashworth. 
keep your eye on Edison at Atalanta. Man United are scouting him. He's, he's definitely a player that United are looking at. Tadebo as well. Elisi as well. Keep an eye on those three players. Um, not saying we're going to sign all three. Things can change. We get a new manager, etc. But keep an eye on those. Um, let's talk about Martinez. From one meltdown to another, there is a drama developing. May, let me just read this. This is exclusive. Um, actually, I think it was our Ryan, our producer, who put this out. So uh, let me just get this. Um, very good source um, around this particular player. So this is nailed on fact um, through the United Stand Twitter, through Ryan, who has sourced this from an A-star source around Martinez. Lissandro Martinez is doing very well in his recovery at Carrington and is likely to be ready for Brentford on the 30th. Woohoo! But there won't be any pressure on him, and the pro but the process has gone really well. I mean, if that's not something to be happy about this morning, give me some skin, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, and non-relations. Um, he is doing really well and is likely to be ready for Brentford on the 30th. I mean, this is this this makes me feel happy inside. So basically, we could have Martinez, Rasmus, Wambasaka. Maguire, everybody back apart from Luke Shaw for Brentford, which means we've only got one more game to get through, which is a big game against Liverpool. But in relation to the league, we that our next league game, we could have Martinez, Rasmus, Wambasaka. Great news. Great news. Such an important player. So he's doing really well. Um, there won't be any pressure on him to play against Brentford, but the process has gone really well. Um, he will be joining up with the Argentinian squad next week. He's seen as an important player within that group. And this is their last reunion before the Copa America. And he'll be able to continue his recovery, completing sessions with the squad. Now, this has sent some people into meltdown. And I sort of actually get it. Partip says this is great news. Yep, making sure you smash a like on the video. Such an important player for us. Such an important character. Um, you know, I was speaking to Rasmus when we were at Carrington about uh, Martinez actually because Martinez was coming back from the injury the first injury he hadn't had the second injury then because we did the interview with Rasmus before the Wolves game um, I think we did it the day before the Wolves game actually anyway it matters not and he was talking about how important Martinez is to him and Rashford and Bruno um, and how he gets the team up the pitch and the way that we play you know, he spent a couple of minutes just talking about how important Martinez is and then his character in the team. So not only is he fundamental to how we play and gets us up the pitch, that higher line, he's also a massive character in the team. So it makes a massive difference when you've got a player like this back. As we've seen when someone like Rodri doesn't play for Man City, they're vulnerable. So Martinez being back is fantastic. But some people are concerned he's going to fly to the other side of the world to play for Argentina or train with Argentina. Why would he not just stay at Carrington and continue his, you know, his recuperation? Surely it's better for an injured player to not be doing long haul flights, the altitude, you know, surely it's better for him just to go to Carrington, come home, rest, etc. I understand that. I understand it. We're on thin ice with Martinez. Psychologically, we're like, wrap him up in cotton wool. Why is he going to Argentina? This is stupid. You know, it can't be good for his injury to be doing all that. And I get it. I do get it. But I think the outrage, and there has been some articles and there's been some stuff on Twitter saying the medical department is wrong. Well, look, I think you've got it right there. The medical department are signing this off. They're, they're happy for Martinez to do it. But I also think as well, think about Martinez. You know, this is Argentina, World Cup winners. You know, he wants to be there. Harry Maguire wants to be fit to go and play for England. Rasmus wants to be fit to go and play for Denmark. Like, it's massively important for Martinez to be part of that Argentinian squad. And player well-being is really important. Um, so you've got to take that into account. And also, I think that really here, what, we, what we're concerned about is he had an operation a year ago on his foot. We were told he was fit in the summer. He went on the international break at the start of September. And I think he came back and had to have an operation. And people were like, why did that happen? And he had a relapse with the foot. This is a different injury. This is not his foot. It's his knee. So it's a completely different injury. And it's a completely different recovery. Um, and we need to keep that in our head. Basically, I'm not bothered that he's going to Argentina. I mean... Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of travel, but I'm not bothered because 
It's a completely different injury, and he's not gonna. He's just not gonna. He's he will be devastated that he's hardly played this season. He's not gonna go and do that for a bit of a holiday, you know, injured. And I think we've got to trust the player, and I think we've got to trust the club and Ten Hag on this. Um, he won't play for Argentina either. I, I don't think he's gonna play for Argentina. I think it's just training. And would you rather Martinez was was at Carrington, training with? United's reserves, or was you rather he was out with Argentina, training with the players that they've got? So I, I, I think it's a storm in a teacup, but I understand why people are concerned about it because clearly he's had a lot of injuries and people get nervous. But I think it's a positive, and the real positive is that I mean, look, Danny Esther says Martinez should prioritize, prioritize recovery. I agree with that, but who's to say going to Argentina? And having some intense training for two weeks ahead of the Brentford game. Look, I, what I'm trying to say is, I should be more blunt. I think he's nearly ready. I think he's nearly ready. I think if we had a game a week after Liverpool, he'd play. I think he's nearly ready. So I think some people are thinking he's hobbling around. Don't get on a plane. I think he's nearly ready. I think the fact that they're saying he's going to be ready for Brentford, which is still two and a half weeks away. I think he's ready for Brentford. So what's the best preparation for Brentford? Go and train with Argentina or stay in Carrington and train with our reserves? Well, the quality of the Argentinian squad is going to be far better. So I, I actually think the best preparation for Brentford is to go and train with Argentina. And it, mentally, it's going to be better for him as well. You know, going back home, you know. So look, I haven't got a problem with it. I haven't got a problem with it. What I will say is, if he comes back from Argentina and he twists his knee... That's the risk, of course. But I, I haven't got a problem with this. I just think, quite rightly, people are nervous that he might not be back fit. But remember what has come out. He's going to be ready for Brentford in two and a half weeks, which means you want him in training, pushing up for match fitness, um, taking tackles. Any, you know, He could take a tackle in Carrington and have a relapse. So, look, I, I haven't got a problem with it. I haven't got a problem with it. If he's going to be back for Brentford, then what's the problem with him training with Argentina? If he wasn't going to be back till the middle of April, I'd question why he's going to Argentina. But if he's, and that's the key for me, if he's going to be back for Brentford, no problem with him going to the Argentinian squad. If he's not going to be back for us until mid April, why is he going to the Argentinian squad? Prioritise that. It will be Martinez next, as it looks like the end of the month he'll be back. Much love to you uh, all and the United Stand. People can be cruel and judgmental. Thank you very much, Slow Sports News. Off topic, where do you think United will finish this season, says Kay. Well, look, I was looking at this this morning, and if you look at Man United, I mean, suddenly the complexion changes. I mean, the game against Liverpool at the weekend is absolutely massive. But if we look at our next few fixtures, Brentford away, Chelsea away, Liverpool at home, Bournemouth away, those next four games, I'm worried. But Brentford away, Chelsea away, Liverpool at home, Bournemouth away, with Martinez, Rasmus, Wambasaka back, maybe Mason Mount back, I'm starting to think anything's possible. I'm starting to think three wins out of four. Whereas without them, I'm thinking, you know, maybe two wins out of four if we're lucky. So things can change very, very quickly. If we can get Martinez and Varane back together, Put wan at right back, Delo at left back. You've got Casemiro, Mainu, Bruno, Mount, McTominay as options. And then you've got Rasmus, Rashford, Ganacho. You know, obviously we've got Anthony, uh, Ahmad. You know, we've we've got we've got we're in a better position. It's still going to be very hard, of course it is, but uh, you know that's the way it is. Um, CJ says, United stand gets smashed for a legitimate interview. Lucas gets away with slandering the whole club. Make it make sense. Um, I don't know. I think they mean uh, that he wasn't bought to be a first team player, but the way it's written is for a more sinister implication, says Marcus Lard. Well, well, write better then, because when it's... I mean, Can I read it back? Um, where was it? I mean, it, what can't speak can't lie. A source close to one of Man United's players claimed that Mason Mount's move to the club was not for football reasons. Well, even if you're a squad player, it's still for football reasons. Um, uh, 
yeah. Um, and look, just finally on Martinez, I think that I absolutely won't play for Argentina. I absolutely won't play for Argentina. It's just about link up, isn't it? Um, just putting. I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm reading. Um, look, I'm just reading here. Um, I'll give him a shout out at Martian Ball on Twitter. This Tarimi dude doesn't even start for Porto, and Tactico said that he's the perfect striker for United. It's always good to go back to that sort of stuff, isn't there? Because people will tell you, why aren't we getting this player? Why aren't we getting that player? And then reality does bite. Um, interesting. Um, just want to talk about Ten Hag quickly. Please do smash a like on the video. Uh, thanks to everyone who's getting involved this morning. Um, sources never get mentioned in any story. Never, says Siji. But I just told you there that Darren Fletcher told us that Eric Ten Hag was obsessed by uh, Mount, really liked him and was very excited about him. From Darren Fletcher. Darren Fletcher doesn't mind that. Like, you can have a source to a story. And I think that sometimes, admittedly, I remember when I said we're signing Alexis Sanchez and I said, I can't tell you who it's coming from, but it will happen. And it did happen. You know, a, a non source story is absolutely fine if it comes true. But if it doesn't come true, it could be bullshit. I'm fully aware of that. I said to you last week that, you know, Ten Hag, I've been told, has got the next three games to save his job. Um, but I also said, even if he wins those, you could say he's got another three games then. Um, I also told you that McTominay, Rashford and Bruno are not for sale. So let's see what happens in the summer. You're only as good as your information. But what I'm saying is there are people out there that when somebody puts something out, they just take it as gospel. I mean, we saw it with the Rasmus interview, didn't we? You know, the pile on was a disgrace and it wasn't true. And... You know, I look at this story and I go, it's not fair. It's just not fair to, you know, basically tarnish Mason Mount like that. I mean, basically, it would be like me starting a new job, my dream job, and then an email going round to the entire company saying, Goldbridge didn't get that job for, job for legitimate reasons. I'm fucked. Everyone's going to be looking at me going, what did he do? Did he take the boss in the toilets? You know, you, you, you know, it's not fair. That's not fair. I think when it's when it's something that's vague and negative, it's not fair. And it should be called out. It, it's not right. And, you know, one thing we've always done here is that if a player's playing shit for months, they'll get told they're playing shit for months. But if they have a good game, I've given McTominay man of the match. I've said McTominay, uh, Maguire's played well this year. That's fair. Fair criticism, fair praise. That's not fair. You know, if I'm Mason Mount, I'm fuming with that. You know, I'm fuming with that. And also it creates... We never think about what it creates in the dressing room. I mentioned it at the start. It damages the manager. It damages the player. It damages the morale. Because if you're Mason Mount, and that could, they will, they will, that will go out. That will go, that will be spoken about. It will be spoken about. We got spoken about for the last couple of days at United. You know, that will get spoken about, right? If you're Mason Mount, maybe this morning it gets spoken about and they go, what a load of bullshit. But if you're Mason Mount, you might be going, hmm, laugh it off. But, you know, privately you might be going, who's, who's done that then? Who in the dressing room has done that? And, and that's, that's not good, is it? That doesn't, you don't see this with Liverpool. I don't want to talk about Liverpool, but we're playing them at the weekend. You don't see this at Liverpool. You don't see a Liverpool, um, you don't see the Liverpool Echo writing an article saying um, a source close to a player says that, um, you know, we bought Gravenberg for non-footballing reasons. It, it, it's not, it, it's not right. <laughs> Goldbridge should interview Luckhurst and question him. Mate, he wouldn't do it. He'd be terrified. He wouldn't do it. I've asked him before loads of times to do a little, you know, piece of content. Um, but look, you know, that's my point. It's the damage. It, it, it damages the fan base. And look, let's be fair. This is not the only story that does this. We see it with, we see it all the time. You know, source says this, source says that. But it damages the fan base. But imagine what it does to the dressing room because they'll probably all sit there and say, what a load of bollocks. I wouldn't write my ass on this. But Mason Mount's not been there that long. Does he know everybody in the dressing room? Does he go and have dinner with everybody in the dressing room? Does he know for sure that somebody in that dressing room isn't bitching behind his back to a source who's talking to the paper. He doesn't. And that causes cracks in the dressing room. Because he might be tight with Luke Shaw, and he might be tight with Maguire, 
But is he tight with, I don't know, two or three of the other lads? Does he know that they haven't leaked it? And is it a current Man United player? Might be a player who's on loan, who's, you know, pissed off. And this is what I mean. You can't just say a source close to a United player says that Mason Mount wasn't bought for footballing reasons because it just causes a shit storm. And there could be a multitude of reasons why that's come out. It could be a joke, as I said. Somebody might, the source might have said, you know what, there's a bit of a joke going around the dressing room that Mason Mount wasn't bought for footballing reasons. He was bought to wash Ten Hag's car because he's never fit. It's a complete not a joke, but could you turn that into he was bought for footballing reasons? Tarimi just came back from injury, says Sim. Um, look, I, I, I just think it, it's, it, it, it's just, it doesn't surprise me. Every day is the same at United, but look, focus on Mason Mount. The positive is he's back training on grass. He's back playing for Manchester United. We talk about the start. You know, I watched Odegaard last night. What a player. What a player. Magnetic number 10 who looks after the ball. We need a player like that. What it means for Bruno, I don't know. Maybe he can do it in the same team, but we 100% need a magnetic number 10 who, when they get the ball, keeps the ball, probes, keeps us up the pitch, high possession. Mason Mount, at his best, can do that. So I'm very excited about that. The issue with Mason Mount is, if we didn't have Bruno, we'd be desperate for him. But we've got Bruno, who isn't a magnetic number 10. He's not possession-based. So how do you get them both into the same team? But competition for places maybe makes Bruno change the way he's playing a little bit. You know, maybe Ten Hag does take Bruno off and goes, there's half an hour for Mount. Go and be magnetic. The fans go, that's what we need. Bruno looks at it and goes, shit, I better do that. I only see the positives. I, I don't even think Mason Mount's really had a debut yet. I, I think this is the start. So let's be positive about it is what I'm saying. Um, just want to give Joe a shout out as well. I do get and read a lot of messages. And um, he made a great point about Eric Ten Hag and the future of Ten Hag. Um, basically said he thinks that the stalemate around Ten Hag's future is completely understandable and that Ineos are actually behaving in a way that you would expect in the sense that they may want to keep Ten Hag, but remember, they are building a different structure above him. So Ten Hag's current contract allows him a major involvement in signings and transfers, which we all agree is wrong. Like you need a director of football who can say no to him, i.e., Really, he should have been told no about Anana because we should have kept the hair for another year and used the 50 million quid for a centre-back. So that's where you need a director of football. But Ten Hag, to his credit, signed a contract where he has that power. Ineos wants to take that power away so that Ten Hag is on a board with people talking about transfers, but the director of football quite rightly has the final say. So Ineos are like, we want to work with you, Eric, but we want you to sign a new contract where you lose a bit of control on the transfers. Whereas Ten Hag is like, well, I want control in the transfers. So they're sort of like, it's a bit of a stalemate. Also, you could say, well, if they're at stalemate, Ineos say, well, we'll sack you. But if they sack him, they've got to pay him over 10 million quid. So you can sort of see why there's a bit of a stalemate going on and why Ineos are going, well, let's see how you do between now and the end of the season. Because if we commit to you, you know, so you can see the balance. And I think it's a really good point by Joe that maybe we don't delve into because it's all about results and get this fraud out or keep him, etc. But actually, when you look at it, it makes a lot of sense. Ineos may want Ten Hag on a reduced contract around his involvement in transfers. Ten Hag may not be happy with that. Ineos probably don't want to sack him because it's going to cost a lot of money. Ten Hag wants to see, you know, how he finishes the season because he might be in a stronger position. Ineos might want to wait till the end of the season to see if they do need to sack him. So... Yeah, it, it makes it makes a lot of sense um, when you think about it like that. So I just wanted to shout Joe out for it because I just thought, you know, actually, it's, it's probably something that we're all aware of, but we don't think about because we get locked in on, wow, well, look at the tactics, you know. So uh, good point. Um, to be fair, Mark, some United stand thumbnails and headlines can be misleading and based on dodgy news sources, these can uh, pile on towards players too, says Duncania. No, I disagree, mate. I absolutely disagree. Um, I, I don't think that's a, a fair representation. I just think that's the, 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 you know, the normal shit that we face. I mean, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. It's been it's been out there for years, you know. If a thumbnail, what what what? Let me let me. You know, I'm happy to do this, but I'm also going to defend the community as well. So let's have a look at um, the thumbnail for today. Um, meltdown, Mount transfer drama, Martinez injury outrage. 
Have we not just spoken about that? Um, last chance, Ten Hag in trouble, players to blame. Pretty happy with that. Uh, your call, Ten Hag's job warning, Glazer debt disgrace. Mate, look, don't act like your shit don't smell. The mainstream have been doing this for years. Like, look at their headlines. Look at every website's article. Everybody knows that the thumbnail and the headline are to get people to, you know, interest. What you can't do is put Mount sold and then you click the video and I go, Mason Mount's back in training. You know, that's clickbait. That's issue. That's not what we do. It's not what most people do. So, look, don't try and turn something into something that it's not. On a news show, we talk about the news. Yes, that's the point of a news show. But what we also do collectively is if there's a story saying Man United are going to sign Mbappe and we put Mbappe transfer question mark, we will say this story says that Man United are in for Mbappe. But I think it's a big load of bollocks. I don't sit here and say, well, we're definitely going to sign him, you know. So, come on, you need to be, you need to grow up a little bit in the sense that you've got to click the videos, you've got to listen to the videos and don't take it out of context. And what you certainly can't do is say that fan content is any worse than the media that we've been thrown at us from the mainstream all our lives. It goes on. That's the way it is. If you want that to change, then, you know, there needs to be a whole massive changement. Even Man United's website has an article where you click. I mean, some of it's terrible. I mean, you know, the worst headlines are the ones where this Man United, this world class superstar is ready to sign for United. And then you click it and it's like they're not world class. They're not ready to sign for United. And, you know, they're not even a footballer. They play basketball. You know, though, though that's clickbait. We've all seen that. Um, but look, as I said, people have their perceptions. That's fine. What have we just spent the last few minutes talking about? Defending the club, defending a player, defending another player, trying to get this team back to where it needs to be and be progressive and actually calling out the things that really damage the club are vague stories from bullshit sources we can't be jumping on that anymore. And look, I am very passionate about it because we were the victim of it at the weekend. And, you know, when you're the victim of something, you do actually make yourself think and go, we need to be better about this. We're always going to bring it into the news because it's a news show, but we also need to be better. You know, how unaccount... We're living in a world of AI now. I don't trust Twitter accounts that I don't know who it is. You know, these Twitter accounts that are at, you know, Martial's boot with a picture of Anthony Martial... Could be fucking anyone. Could be Kyle Walker on the piss. You know, it could be anybody. So you've got to be very careful about that sort of stuff anyway. But people take it. People are having conversations with these accounts like they're mates. You don't know who it is. Could be me on another on a burner. You just don't know. But it's the same as an article like that. Man United source close to a player says that Mason Mount was bought for non-footballing reasons. Uh, hello. Not going to fall for that. Not going to fall for that. Where's the credibility? Where's the story? Okay, let's counter it. Darren Fletcher, technical director of Man United, said Ten Hag is obsessed with Mason Mount, is really excited about signing him. I think I'll go with that over that. You know what I mean? Um, thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you smash a like on the video. Um, and I will speak to you very, very soon. Um, and um, we are back at two o'clock and we are back at um it's eight o'clock tonight um yeah it's right it's it's eight o'clock tonight uh duncani is back again mate go and go and play with your friends on twitter that hate this community and and fan community because you you obviously don't like it and and my my, my big message to you is right you don't have to watch it and we can remove you or even better go and go and play somewhere else like if you don't like something why do you spend all your time watching it Go and go, you know, go and touch grass. Get out there and do something you don't enjoy. Because it sounds like you don't enjoy it, and that's fine. You don't have to watch it. But I'm not going to sit here and let you shit all over it um, on, on nonsense where you try and make us out to be worse than what we've been talking about this morning. And 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 you know that particular journalist will be sat there tomorrow with Eric Ten Hag asking him a question, and yet we shouldn't have an interview with Rasmus in a positive way. It's a nonsense. 
Thanks everyone for watching. Legends, take care.